as you saw <coughs> by the title of today's video let's talk about intuition is the highest form of intelligence it's an article in Forbes Forbes uh, I don't really read Forbes but it's a it's a article that I shared some years ago on my in my group in Facebook and it caught attention so today I'm going to read through it and uh, um, comment like I normally do while I'm reading and hopefully give you some examples of what it means you know uh, that intuition is the highest form of intelligence and um, and um, let's see what they write about I mean I have spoken to you about intuition as the highest form of intelligence now for years and all my articles and books refer to that and uh, intuition like I said before is the core of the feminine the missing part in our Western psyche by the missing part what I mean by the missing part is that it's uh, uh, you know, you, you, like I said, your brain or your, your head is divided into two parts. It's got the uh, masculine part, the left, uh, the left hand side, which is the intellect, and the feminine, which is the intuitive mind. So it's got the uh, rational mind and the intuitive mind, the intuitive mind, which is missing. And really, all mythology, all folklore, all depth psychology and real psychology, if it's a real, if someone is a real psychologist, that is to say, psychology, the word psychology the study of the soul is the recovery of this part of the soul of your inner self and then you become whole yeah and that's what it means to be uh, redeemed that's the that's the purpose of a redeemer and the redeemer the, the redeemer the, the redemption comes when you become whole you no longer project the missing part of you um, uh, onto society or on, on, a, on a next perfect lover or husband, wife, friend, <coughs> girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, uh, a guru, a group, a religion or a politician that is going to save you. But you have integrated all this into you and you have found that the missing part, the missing half that you have always been looking for has always been within you. And that's what it means by redemption. And that missing part, the inner self, is your divine part. I might actually make a video dedicated to this. If you're interested in knowing more about the Redeemer, the meaning of the Redeemer, let me know in the comments. Okay, so, like I said, intuition is the missing part, the intuitive mind. So let's say what this Forbes article says about it. Here we go. Intuition, argues Gerd uh, Gigeranza, a director of the Max Planck Institute for Human Development is less about suddenly knowing the right answer and more about instinctively understanding what information is important and can thus be dis discarded. I will make a comment about this um, in a moment because I don't ag agree with this first statement but I'll read the next uh, paragraph and I'll tell you why. Gigerenza, author of book Gut Feelings, The Intelligence of the Unconscious, says that he is both intuitive and rational. In my scientific work, I have hunches. I can't explain always why I think a certain path is the right way, but I need to trust it and go ahead. I also have the ability to check these hunches and find out what they are about. That's the science part. Now, in private life, I rely on instinct. For instance, when I first met my wife, I didn't do, uh, I didn't do uh, computations, nor did she. In other words, you know, in the first sentence, this Forbes article says that it's not about receiving uh, answers straight away. How did it, how did it word it? It's, it's, it's uh, Max Planck Institute for him is less about suddenly knowing the right answer and more about instinctively understanding what information is important and can thus be discarded. It's not really. If any any of you probably who had a real intuitive uh, in, information review, it would happen suddenly. But of course, in uh, when you're doing your uh, research. 
you will your your research you will you will feel that this is the right answer this is the wrong answer and so on and so on and so on but in the se- in the next sentence the same person who said this that the intuition is less about less about sudden knowing and more about discerning what is the right answer when he met his wife there was no com- computation he just knew bang you get it and that's 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 the real real intuitive knowing that's the sudden knowing the inner sub the inner voice says that's it and you trust it you trust it completely and it goes on about this a little more later i'll read it to you <coughs> but i'll give you a few examples of this the difference when he's when the article is talking about here about the discerning the right answer and sudden knowing yeah the discerning the right answer is like they say in this article that it happens during research or when you when you're working for instance when i write my books when i wrote my books you're focused on the on on doing the on doing this process of writing and you're researching i i didn't really need to research that much because i've done all the research before so i was putting it all together but during the time of writing new insights came to me and it wasn't so much that uh, it wasn't a choice of be- between a b and c this is wrong one this is the right one i just knew that this is exactly what i needed to do and it was the right thing <laughs> so will it, let me give you an example i was looking for a title of the book i had a few things in my mind but it didn't sound right if you like so i stayed with the question like i normally do and one day there i was <coughs> watching some kind of meaningless video on youtube which i usually do so i got out of my own way and the answer bang and it, and it was just there where we dream the single dream a quest beyond the veil of time for the divine feminine and the soul it just came i didn't even have to write it down i remember that yeah another another example i'll i'll tell you in in uh, is about uh, this this happened um more probably not so much the sudden knowing but the more sort of a progressive you know this is the right choice this is the wrong choice and so on, what what the first sentence says and this was in 1995 i was traveling in norway i left my job well paying job in perth my nice apartment my classic car i left that lifestyle i thought you know i knew i i wanted to know that there's got to be more to my life than just fitting in to society fitting into the masses there's got to be more and by then by then of course i already got the answer in a dream but i didn't believe that that's the right answer i also talk about that in one of my talks lying on the rock maybe some of you remember that lying on the rock and the inner voice saying this is you are so and so and so this was the answer but i didn't believe well a lot of problems come because i get the answer and i don't believe so i keep going and asking you know you can do that as well that's not problem you will just get more you know more elaborate answers more more answers that are uh, sort of what can we say more confirming what they've said in the first what the inner voice said in the first place yeah so there i was 95 norway in a hostel and i was you know this still the same same question there's got to be more to life than just fitting in to society and i met this man um, uh, from holland he was a poet he called himself a poet he was a singer in a band actually had a band and they used to play in churches funny enough and he looked like a jim morrison from doors i've said this, i've told you this story in my talks before as well but um i got really um you know i hang i hung on every word he said i liked him you know he was very uh, authentic and he carried the tarot cards i didn't that's how i got introduced to tarot cards he was sort of a mysterious to me so i projected my inner self my inner voice on him and the unconscious arranged it in such a way <coughs> that we had to go our separate ways because i was too sort of uh, too uh, uh, listening to him too much i instead of listening to my own inner voice so it started off the, the unconscious started the, the inner self started communicating this to me by for instance i was walking in town and i would hear the same song over and over and over this was tlc you know don't chase waterfalls stay stay close to the lakes and the rivers that you used to and it was everywhere you know don't chase 
what you don't need you've already got your own inner resources the inner water of life it's i will tell you what you need what you're looking for and eventually i had a dream where he was choking me and that day he moved out but before he moved out he gave me a present and he said i don't know what you have to i'll show you because i found it just the other day. that's why i wanted to share the story with you again i don't know what you have to do with it but i know it's important to you can you see a, dict, a, a, a tape recorder he used to carry this to um, look how dusty and, and, and thing I found this the other day I'm cleaning out my room for some guests to stay uh, they're coming this week and I found this this I got this in 95 so I kept it still do you keep all the things that you find randomly it's important that you do because you might not understand what it means when you when you found it but you will later in life it will come to you so he said, and he said to me, I don't know what you have to do with it, but I know it's important for you to have it. And as it turned out, that's how my life turned out. That is to say, communication of what the inner voice says, what the unconscious wants to communicate to the community. And this is evident in all my work that I do, whether it is just a poetry, mystic poetry on, on my social media, on, especially on Facebook, or if, if it is essays or my books and now my talks so this was you know the answer was already there you know whatever you whatever the unconscious tells you whatever the inner voice dictates to you which is important communicate that first to yourself to, to understand what you need to understand about the inner self about the process of recovering of the self and then communicate that to the community yeah so this is, you know, the, the article starts off by saying that he does not believe that there are sudden insights. They're more like a research. It's gradual. It's a choice. But then he says when he met his wife, it, was, it wasn't a choice or between A, you know, a woman A, woman B, woman C, or maybe woman D. You know, the C is better than D, but the A is better than C. It wasn't, it wasn't, com it was just sudden. So he, what he says in the first paragraph contradicts to what he says in the second paragraph. But intuition is like that. It's 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 sudden. You can be sitting. I, I will keep reading in a moment. You you can be sitting on a hammock and you suddenly got the answer, like I did with my the book title. Or it can be gradual and your choices. But it's even with this, it wasn't so much about choice. It was already there. But I didn't believe. I didn't know what it was. I had to be prompted with with the answers that I was getting from the unconscious, practically in a practical way. Yeah. Okay, so we keep going. So this is ends where he uh, met his wife and, you know, the, the person says, uh, for instance, when I first met my wife, I didn't do the computation, nor did she, so it was sad. So I'm telling you this because recently one of my readers, Joe Boleda, passed a question uh, that stopped me in my tracks. Joy Boleda is a woman. What about intuition? It has never been uh, titled as a form of intelligence. But would you think that someone who has great intuition in things has more intelligence? So she's asking him this. And this is what he says. My gut instinct is to say yes, especially when we are talking about people who are already intellectually curious, rigorous in their pursuit of knowledge, and willing to challenge their own assumptions. You have to get out of your own way. What you know you got to forget about it. You don't, you don't, need, you don't know anything. You've got to start from fresh and see what happens. That's, when you, that's how you get the new answers. Let me put, it, uh, put, put this a bit simpler. If all you do is sit in a chair and trust your intuition, you are not exercising much intelligence. But if you take a deep dive into a subject and study numerous possibilities, you are ex ex exercising intelligence when you get instinct tells you, tells you what what is and isn't important again this is contradicting the beginning you know when he says exactly that you know you can't trust your intuition intuition when you're sitting in a hammock a sudden answer but you can when you're doing a study both are relevant it, it the 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 uh, intuition works in in any setting whether you're sitting in you know, in a, in, a, in a hammock and get your answers straight away. That's how, that's how uh, you know, talented psychics work. If you ever met a talented psychic or you went to a talented psychic or someone who reads tarot cards and they're really talented, they know what to do. 
they will be telling you things straight away there. There's no research. They don't need to go and read in the book or sit there for months on, on, on end researching papers to get an answer. They get it straight away. It's there in front of them. They just project it onto their tarot cards. Yeah? So this is contradicting again. You know, he doesn't believe that there can be answers straight away in a hammock. But, you know, there are, like I showed you so many times, only in, in research. Yes, research is like that. And what's important about research to understand is that when you're, for instance, working on your paper or on an essay or on a book, you're not working alone. When you're working intuitively, you're not working alone. The inner self, your inner voice works with you and it becomes a partner in your life, in everyday life. It, you know, all, everything I've done, it was never really by myself. It was together with one foot in this visible reality of everyday life, of research, and the other firmly, root, firmly placed in the dimension of the, of the inner self, of the unconscious. And I work together with it. He could say, uh, we're partners in writing and in everything in, in my life now. <clears throat> so the books that I've written, for instance, where we dream and mystic soul, are not just what I'm saying. We are saying this together, or the unconscious is saying through me. So well, that's important. If you think that you, uh, for instance, I know people that are, uh, you know, for instance, someone has asked me that whether this relationship works in business. Of course it does. But you have to re create a relationship in the first place so that you trust the hunters, the answers that are, that are coming to you. What is wrong? What is, you know, what is the right thing? To, which way is the right way to go? And you will get answers immediately. There's no need to wait for months. Or, or, or for research. Research is just a great way for you to learn to, to trust the inner voice, your inner self, to, to create a relationship with the, with the intuition, with, your, with the unconscious. To focus yourself on the question so that you can receive an answer. But once you have learned that, that, that really well, you can receive your answers immediately while sitting in a hammock or just walking around in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment like I do. You know, so that's, that's just, that's, I wanted to stress this because they keep going in this Forbes article that the instant revelation of intuition is not the same as you know, while you're doing research. Because this is written by a scientist, basically. That's, what, that's why it keeps going like this. In some aspects, intuition could be thought of as a clear understanding of collective intelligence. For example, most websites are today organized in an intuitive way, which means that they are easy for most people to understand and navigate. This approach evolved after many years of chaos online. A common wisdom emerged over what information was superfluous and what was essential, that is, about us equals essential. It does. When you're writing, it makes the same thing. First, you might have, it, it works in the same way. It, it arranges itself in an intuitive way. So from the beginning to the end, the, your argument makes sense and you have examples. Yeah? If any one of you have written a paper or an essay or had to write an article for, some, for something, in, in, and for instance, you were asked to write about it or even give a talk, you might not need, know the, the whole structure of your talk straight away, but you will know, you will, when you start to work on it, it will gradually, uh, you know, put, it would, it would form itself. So it makes sense from beginning to the end. That's what this is really saying. From chaos, from an idea to an actual intelligible uh, argument with examples. Yeah, and intuition and your inner self can, works with you to get that right. Usually, that's, that's how it is. I'll give you examples. I'll give you more examples in a minute. Theo Humphreys, uh, Humphreys argues that intuitive design can be described as understandable, understandable without the use of instructions. This is true when an object makes sense to most people because they share a common understanding of the way things work. You might say that I'm a believer in the power of disciplined intuition. Do your legwork, as your, uh, use your brain, uh, share logical arguments, and allow trust and respect your intuitive powers. But if you merely sit in a hammock and ask me to trust your intuition, I'll, quick, I'll quickly be out the door without saying goodbye. Because that's written by a, 
by a, by a scientist, someone that obviously works usually with their rational mind, and then they use intuition to sort of organize things. But like I said, you don't need to, of course, when you're doing, giving a talk, uh, you're writing a book, you need to have, like he said, you know, in an organized way with examples and so on. <clears throat> but if you want an answer, you don't need to have all this, you don't, you know, an answers, intuitive answers don't come in the form of a whole book or, or an essay. They come instantly in a thought, in an idea, no, not an idea, it's an answer to your, like I said, with the, with, the, with the title of the book. It was just there. I was playing with words. Uh, I remember, I still remember they're lying on the bed and I'm watching this video and I think I just, just suddenly started to play with words. This, this, this. I had an I had inkling of what it was and then suddenly put the words together. That was it. It came. I didn't have to write a paper or have examples of how it happened. It just happened. Yeah? Okay. I said, I say this from personal experience, the more research I do, the better my intuitive works. It helps to focus your intuitive intuition on, on the answers you're seeking when you're doing your research. Although this might be a, a paraphrase <coughs> of his thoughts on the subject, Albert Einstein has been widely quoted as saying the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created the society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Yes, I'll give you a little more. Well, let me just finish. This is just finished now. Uh, just two more paragraphs. I'll finish this article, then I'll tell you a little uh, what actually, you know, someone talking about Einstein in this. Sometimes a corporate mandate or group think or your desires to produce a certain outcome can cause your rational mind to get in the wrong direction, of course. At times like this, it is intuition that holds the power to save you. <coughs> the bad feeling gnawing away at you is your in intuition telling you that no matter how badly you might wish to talk yourself into this direction, it is wrong way to go. Again, he's contradicting himself here too, because you know, in this in this instance, again, you don't need to research. You simply know. There's no writing a paper and examples of why this is the bad direction. You just know, bang, and you know. You could be sitting in a hammock when that happens. Okay, smart people lis listen to these feelings, and the smartest people among us, the ones who make great intellectual leaps forward cannot do this without harnessing the power of intuition. Exactly. I couldn't have done all that I do without the, the, the companion and the relationship with the intuition, with the inner self. I couldn't. Because, you know, um, it's, it wouldn't fall into place. I, I can't explain it. It, would, it just wouldn't fall into place. I'll be, I'll be bumbling about stuff you know, like lots of scientists do and lots of people, if you read the uh, papers, scientific papers or scientific books, there's, you know, that, that there's two or three paragraphs and four or six paragraphs of examples because they're trying to, they're trying to convince the audience that they're right. <coughs> there's no, they, they, they don't get the answer straight away. It's not, they have to have so many examples to be able to communicate one point. But like I said uh, in, in, uh, in other videos, when I'm in my head, in the left side, the rational side, the rational mind, I, can, I write books or essays. But when I'm in, focused on my intuitive mind, when I'm working together with the inner self, I can say the same thing in two lines of mystic poetry. You're to the point. When you're not sure, when you're not using intuition, there will be a whole lot of examples. Because, you, you know, the point hasn't, you haven't got the idea yet. So you're using lots of examples to get there. You haven't got it. If you can say it in two words, if you can say it in two lines, you got it. If you have to write a book or something about this one thing, and you still haven't been not able to, at the, at the conclusion, to say it in a paragraph, you haven't got it. It's still, as an idea, it's in the process, but the, but the intuitive connections haven't been yet made. Yeah? Okay, so I'll tell you now, I'll give you now what, uh, this is Brian Swim. 
Brian Swim. Uh, Swim is a um, uh, cosmologist, a scientist. He did an interview, this is from an interview for uh, Maria Gimbutas' uh, Signs Out of Time. It's a documentary about her and about her work. You know, the discovery of the older Neolithic uh, uh, culture, which she called uh, Old Europe. And there she found the figurines, hundreds and thousands of figurines of the goddess of, the, of women, women figurines, uh, usually with bird-headed figurines with wings and so on, with water images, birds such as duck, uh, geese, swans, um, chevrons, all these images are of the feminine of the intuition. So she found this, and of course she got ostracized from the from the uh, uh, conventional archaeological uh, society because she dared to make um, she dared to call to name these figurines. She she intuitively knew what they mean, you know. She gave them meaning. And of course, uh, the conventional uh, archaeologists don't agree with that because the, how could you know this if you don't haven't spoken to the people? We can't know this, but you can if you're working intuitively. The objects spoke to her, the, the figurines spoke to her, and she knew what they meant. She wasn't, she didn't need hundreds of examples. She knew exactly what they meant. Once you know, then you can go and find examples to support your intuitive findings, not the other way around, where you're looking for hundreds of examples and you still haven't got, you haven't made the intuitive connection of what it means. So this is Brian Swim talking about the, uh, just bear with me, talking about the, um, uh, Albert Einstein, how he, this is a story about Einstein he tells in this interview, how Einstein got it. So he goes, this is, uh, this is uh, Brian Swin talking. He invented the fundamental theory of cosmology that we use today. So he gave birth to what are called the equation, uh, the field equations. In other words, uh, he wrote down the equations that tell us how the universe organizes itself. But he had no data about the large-scale universe. That came later after him. So you see, he got it intuitively. He, did, he didn't have the examples. He didn't have the data yet. But he got it intuitively. That came after him. So, <clears throat> so people are asking... How did you get this information? Well, imagination, intuition, through profound uh, reflection at the body level. He even used the word uh, musculature. So he would be in touch with those very dynamics that gave birth to the universe. He was in touch with the unconscious, you know, that's how he got it. That's how he could actually um, <coughs> express them. So he was the universe writing its own signature through the power of intuition. You know, we call Albert Einstein the most probably, you know, the, the, the most intelligent person of our last hundred years. But like I said, you know, in the Forbes article, the guy, the scientist, he didn't believe in intuitive discovery, you know, making intuitive connections to get your answers straight away, you know, sitting in a hammock. He didn't believe that. that if you're going to tell me that you trust my intuition, he's going to walk away. But if you do your research and give examples and this and the slower process of getting the answers, he'll believe you because it's intelligence that way. You know, scientific community is like this. But there are people, like I said, like Einstein, this is an example. He got the answers intuitively. He didn't have examples. He didn't have, the, uh, he didn't have the studies yet. He didn't have the papers. He didn't have anything to prove how he got it. He just got it. That came after him. Yeah? There's another example I'll share with you. What, how, how, how are we going for time? Okay. There's another example. I've shared with you this before. Barbara McClintock, also a scientist, and she was working with the chromosomes of corn. And the way she was working is both intuitively and research, so both in, you know, rational mind and intu intuition working together. <coughs> and she would talk to the chromosomes of corn, and the chromosomes of corn 
she called them her friends, were talking back to her and were communicating the answers, the research that she was looking for to her directly, intuitively. And she wrote her paper uh, on that with, with, with examples and she won the Nobel Prize for biology for that. Yeah, I told you this, this before. And when she presented her studies, the science, the, the people that were sitting in the crowd, there was stunned silence because no one has gone that far yet to that research. They didn't have the, they didn't have the research yet to get that far. So they didn't know what to make of it. A lot of people are like this intuitively. You find you, you're ahead of the curve. Someone, a friend of mine, told me just the other just the other day, just the other week, she said to me about my work, it's tough to be ahead of the curve. Yes, you, you know, when you're ahead of the curve, curve you, you, it, it's difficult because how do you communicate information that people haven't caught up to yet? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Inter intuition as the highest form of intelligence from the Forbes article. Like always, I'll leave all the links <coughs> links and, and, thing, and things that I've just read to, for you in the video description. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.